how do you paint something that's white? No, I'm not talking about Ken. I'm talking about Ken's hair. How do you paint something that doesn't have a distinct color? What's up everyone? Today we're going to be looking at six tips and tricks to help you paint portraits with watercolor. Stay tuned until the end because there's a technique in there that even I still struggle with. Tip number one, start with a base layer. First and foremost, I start with a base layer of color. With watercolor, always paint light to dark. Once you've put down a darker color, you won't really be able to paint a lighter color over top. You'll just end up making a brown splotch of paint. In this case, I paint a base layer of cerulean blue over the areas where there will be a shadow, followed by a skin tone mixture that I blend together. I leave a couple areas unpainted where I think there's gonna be highlights, like the cheekbone or the tip of the nose. Tip number two, eyes are not always white. Even though you think of eyes as being white, they're often shadowed. So it's okay to paint over the areas where the eyes are as well, especially when you're painting a smaller portrait without as much detail. If you leave the eyes white, you might end up with weird highlights that don't look super natural. Tip number three, blend in blue to make shadows. With the base layer down, I start building up the mid-tones layer by layer, focusing on areas that I know will be darker and blending them into the lighter areas with a wet brush. For shadowed areas, you can take your normal skin tone color and mix in just a touch of blue. That will sort of desaturate the color and give a more cohesive look. I like to do the mixing of the colors off the page and then add it to the paper once I have a color that I like. Watercolor is a very layer by layer process, so it's okay if you add a dark shadow and don't really blend it in. For example, the nose here or above the eyes, I add a pretty dark shadow without really blending it in, but that's all right because I can come back in the future and add a layer that sort of makes a more cohesive look. Tip number four, always pay attention to how wet your paper is. There's not one right or wrong answer to this, but you have to pay attention to the state of your paper. If it's super dry, you're going to get hard lines, and that can be okay sometimes. But if you want softer edges, you're going to want the paper to be damp. In general, more water will mean a less saturated color, and less water will mean a more saturated color. Watercolor is all about adding layers of paint, so paying attention to how wet your paper is is a crucial part of that process. Tip number five, picture hair as bigger blocks rather than individual strands. When we get to the hair, it can be a little tricky. Ken's hair is such a light blonde color that it can be hard to paint a color that matches. Instead of focusing on individual strands of hair, I like to think of it in bigger blocks. By doing this, I can focus on painting the darker areas of shadow, which ends up giving a overall shape to his head of hair. This is called negative painting, and it's a really interesting technique that can be useful for areas that are brighter or whiter. Tip number six, you don't have to blend everything. I still have this issue. Sometimes when I paint, I just wanna blend everything into a smooth gradient, but you don't always have to do that. Don't be afraid of leaving a hard edge of a shadow without blending it. If you have more direct lighting on the subject, the shadows are going to be less soft. Whichever way you paint, try to be consistent though. If the shadows are soft in one area, they're probably soft in others. And if they're hard, they're probably hard in others. Did you find this helpful? Is there something else I can answer? Let me know in the comments. Press the thumbs up if you found this useful and subscribe for more watercolor tips and tricks in the future. Thanks.